Let's talk about functions and relations today. What's the difference? So right here, every function is a relation. So the way I like to introduce this is I like you to think back to two dimensional shapes. Is every square a rectangle? And is every rectangle a square? Why or why not? So the first thing I wanna go over is that every square is a rectangle. Why? Well, by definition, I'm going to zoom in here. By definition, every square is a rectangle because a rectangle is defined as opposite sides are parallel. So your opposite sides are parallel and congruent, meaning they're the exact, exactly the same meaning the length of them, they have the same length. So opposite sides are parallel and congruent and it has 90 degree angles. But now, not every rectangle is a square. Well, a square is defined using the exact same definition. However, a square also has equal sides, all the sides are equal. That's how you can, like one tick mark is on each side. That lets you know that those sides are the exact same length, okay? And this rectangle up here, these sides are the same length, and then these sides have a different number of tick marks. So they're not the same length as the other one, but it is the same length as this one up here. Okay, so you may already know that. If not, you'll learn it in geometry, big time. So in a square, by definition, opposite sides are parallel and congruent. It has nine, four 90 degree angles. I should probably write that there, four 90 degree angles, but also all the sides are equal or the same length or congruent, okay? For a rectangle, I don't need that. I just need to have opposite sides that are parallel and congruent and have 90 degree angles, which is why I can define a square as a rectangle. It's just a special type of rectangle in which all the sides are the same length. So the same comparison is true for relations and functions. A relation is just a set of ordered pairs that shows a relationship between your x value and your y value. We call that a relation. A function is that it's a relation, but it's a special type of relation in which there is only one output value for each input value. So every function is a relation, but not every relation is a function, okay? A function is special. It has the same definition as a relation, but also there's one output for each input. Okay, I don't need that for I don't need that for a relation. Okay, a relation is just a set of ordered pairs. So let's move on to functions. How can I determine if a relation is a function? Well, when given a list of ordered pairs through multiple representations, so when you're given a list, a mapping diagram, which I'll show you, or a table of values, if x values repeat, it's not a function. Okay, so I'm looking for repeating x values because in a function, there is only one y value for each x value. If I have more y values for one single x value, it's not a function. So let's look at number one. My x values are 3, 5, 6, 7, and 10. Do any of those x values repeat? Nope, so is it a function? Yes, this is a function. Now, I wanna point out these little squiggly brackets right here. They look like this, whoa, like this fancy smancy little brackets. That was really ugly. But we use brackets when we're listing numbers. We're making a list. We use brackets when we are listing. I'll just say when making a list. So those brackets look like this, whoop. Whoop. You might be able to draw those better than me. Let's look at number two. 
So I'm looking at my x values, and remember ordered pairs are x comma y, 0, 2, 3, 2, 3. What do you notice? Oh, repeating x values there, repeating x values there. Is that a function? Nope, not a function. That's all we're doing is we're just determining is it a function or not. Obviously, I've got a set of ordered pairs. There's obviously some relationship between these x values and these y values, so it's a relation, but specifically, is it a function? That's what we're looking at. So in this mapping diagram, what you see here is you see your set of x values in this oval over here, and you see your set of y values in this oval over here, and then you can show what x value is paired with what y value from these arrows. So negative 4, negative 2, if I wrote it as an ordered pair, it would look like that, okay? 1, 7, if I wrote it as an ordered pair, it would look like that. 5 is paired with 0, 12 is paired with 0, and if I wanted to, I could write it like that, if that helps you. And we're still looking to see if we have any repeating x values. We do not. We have negative 4, negative 1, 5, and 12. We do not have any repeating x values. Therefore, this is a function. Now, I want to point out, I do have repeating y values. Right here, right here. Is that okay? Yes, repeating y values are okay. That does not matter. Okay, let's look at number four. In this mapping diagram, negative six is paired with negative four, zero is paired with negative seven, zero is also paired with three, which means if I wrote those as ordered pairs, it would look like this. Is that okay to have? No, I have repeating x values. So you can see when your arrow comes out from the same x value to two different y values, that's a telltale sign that you have repeating x values? No, this is not a function. Okay, let's move on to your table of values. So we've looked at it from a list of ordered pairs, from a mapping diagram, and then here's from a table of values. So in this first table of values, I'm looking at my x values because that is the factor that determines if it is a if this relation is a function or not. So I can see already. I have repeating negative tens. Oh, look, I also have repeating twos and I have repeating zeros. No, absolutely not. That is not a function. Let's look at number six. Do I have any repeating x values? I do not. Do I have repeating y values? I do, but is that okay? It absolutely is. So, yes, this is a function. Let's move on to the next section. How do you determine if a relation is a function when given a graph? We're going to use the vertical line test. So what does a vertical line look like? It looks like this. It runs vertical, right? North to south. So if a vertical line intersects a graph more than once at any point, then it is not a function. So what I like to say is put your pencil up to your paper, kind of like this, right here and drag it to the right. And if it ever intersects your graph more than once, your graph is not a function. So let's look at number seven. Now, since you can't see me drag my pencil across this page, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna draw a bunch of lines as I'm moving to the right. So here's a vertical line, vertical line, and I'm drawing, and what do you notice? It is intersecting the graph more than once on one particular line. So right there, that's all I need to show that this is not a function. Let's move on to number eight. In number eight, since I just have these random points on this graph, what I'm gonna do is draw a line through each point. Oh my gosh, that was totally the worst line I've ever drawn. drawn. Okay. There's my vertical line, still a terrible line, but whatever. I'm gonna try this one more time. So vertical line, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to make it better. But anyways, vertical line, doesn't intersect the graph more than twice, awesome, we're good. The next one, what do you notice? It intersects two points 
which means if I were to just list out these ordered pairs, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, 2 is a point on this graph, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, negative 4 is also a point. I have repeating x values. I can already tell you this is not a function. Let's look at number 9. Number 9 is just a, a line, and if I were to draw a vertical line going from left to right, this vertical line, does it intersect this graph? When I say this graph, I mean this line that's diagonal on top of this coordinate plane. Does it intersect this graph more than once on any given line at any point? No, it does not. So is it a function? Yes, this is a function. Let's move on. Number 10. Now, number 10 is a vertical line. And every point on this vertical line, which there's an infinite number of points, I'm just putting dots on these where the, the lines meet. Every point on this line has an x value that's the same. One, two, three, four, five. This point right here has an x value that's five. That point right there has an x value that's five. They all have an x value. That's five. So do I have repeating x values on a vertical line? Absolutely. So is this vertical line a function? No, it is not. Now let me ask you this. What if I had a straight horizontal line? For a horizontal line, would it pass the vertical line test? Sure. I'll have a bunch of repeating y values, and it's okay to have repeating y values. So that concludes your notes over functions versus relations. Your next set of notes will go over domain and range.